Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back to AJ Khan Geotechnical Forum. And today I'll be talking about bearing capacity of shallow foundations. I have divided this whole lecture into three parts. In the first part, in part one, I'll be talking on gross and net pressure at foundation level, which forms the backbone of this uh, uh, bearing capacity analysis of shallow foundations. You'll find it in the course of the lecture. And in part two, uh, I will be talking about the bearing capacity equations proposed by Terzaghi and Meyerhoff, and also I'll be talking about effect of water table on bearing capacity calculation. In part three, of course, I'll be coming up with uh, six examples, uh, three for homogeneous subsoil and from uh, example 4 to 6 for multilayer subsoil, which is more practical situation. So let us start with the part 1, uh, and the content is gross and net pressure at foundation level. Right, uh, here we have a foundation, uh, you can see the shallow foundation, uh, the plan dimension of which is B by L, and the column uh, through which the load P is being transferred to the foundation is small b by small l and the foundation is located at a depth df we will talk about all these things how uh, depth of foundation is uh, determined and all and the thickness of this concrete footing is t subscript f so the difference between the ground level to the top of the footing level is df minus tf right and we have also marked this foundation level for convenience so how do we construct this um, uh, uh, foundation what we do is we uh, simply excavate from the original ground level to the required depth of foundation and then from the foundation level we cast this uh, footing base and on top of this we uh, simultaneously cast this column and around the column on all four sides we backfill the excavated earth in a compacted manner right and uh, let us let us talk about all these notations on the left hand side and we are talking about case one which is excavation backfill that means the uh, after excavation and after constructing this footing and the short column here within the depth of foundation all the four sides of the column will be backfilled and com compacted so we are talking about this situation and the notations are very simple unit weight of backfill is gamma b uh, B for backfill and of course we are always referring to effective unit weight because if the water table is somewhere there it will be submerged and we will have to consider effective unit weight in our calculation and the unit weight of uh, concrete and also this has to be effective unit weight of concrete depth of footing and all the other terms I have already talked about and the gross pressure which is the very topic here uh, is denoted by Q sub G and the net pressure we are denoting by Q sub n. So, what is actually the gross pressure? So, gross pressure actually includes all the loads above the foundation level. That is a very simple approach to remember it. So, anything above this foundation level within this ex excavation or within the zone of this excavation, whatever is there is uh, included in the gross pressure. Like uh, let us see the components. First of all, the pressure due to superimposed load QP. So this is the superimposed load which, will you, which you will obtain from uh, structural analysis from ETF modeling, STAD modeling or whatever modeling you use. So that is purely the structural imposed load that you will obtain from the models. So the pressure due to this superimposed load uh, denoted by Q sub P uh, will be equal to P divided by BL, so P being the load and B and B multiplied by L being the area of the footing. And next uh, component will be pressure due to the weight of the footing, which is this bit, okay. And the unit weight will be, uh, sorry, unit weight is gamma sub C and the thickness is TF times the area is BL. So this bit gives you the volume times unit weight will give you the total load of this footing base or foundation base divided by the area on which this load will be spread that is BL. You can see here so this BL and this BL will cancel out. So in fact this will be equal to thickness times uh, gamma prime C. And the next component will be due to pressure due to load of column within the excavation. So this short column, often we call it short column, within the depth of excavation from the ground level to the top of the uh, footing, this bit is called the short column. And the load due to this column will be B times L, 
okay that is the cross section area times the height is df minus tf times gamma c will give you the total weight of the short column and that will be spread over this whole area bl so that is divided by bl and that will give you the pressure due to column due to load of column within the excavation zone and number four the pressure due to the compacted fill that surrounds the column on all four sides so if we if you take that into account because anything within this zone will be included in the gross pressure and beyond this zone that is the only component is p okay uh, so that will be b minus b that should cover the whole uh, of the whole in the direction of width and l minus l that should cover the whole uh, dimension in the direction of long dimension of the footing times df minus df of course this is the height in which the backfill is at times the unit weight will give you the total weight divided by the area and gives you the pressure due to the compacted backfill so uh, the gross pressure will be qp plus qf all these four components if you add up that will give you the gross pressure right and the net pressure very simple just the mathematical first of all try to remember this mathematical expression or definition that is gross pressure minus gross pressure minus the effective overburden pressure up at the foundation level is the net pressure okay uh, i'll tell you what the meaning is uh, first of all try to remember this mathematical expression qg minus gamma dr gamma b dr so the gross pressure minus the effective overburden pressure at the foundation level is the net pressure that means actually this is the pressure the net pressure is the pressure at foundation level which acts in excess of the present effective overburden pressure so anything because see uh, initially before excavation at this foundation level you already had this uh, effective overburden pressure of the soil which is equal to gamma df so what excess is coming at this foundation level that is qg minus the present effective overburden pressure and this excess effective sorry this excess pressure at the foundation level is the root cause of all the problems if you talk about bearing capacity or settlement or whatever that is the root cause of all the problems that you are going to encounter in soil mechanics and as a geotechnical engineer okay so let us uh, pick up some simple example in fact the problem is very simple once the concept is very clear to you uh, the given values of the parameters are this gamma b that is the saturated unit weight is 18 kilonewton per meter cube i have not put any effective unit weight sign here because uh, the weight of sorry unit weight of the backfill here that is given in the problem is the saturated unit weight and the water table is located at the ground surface so when you consider when you're going to consider uh, the effective unit weight for calculation of gross pressure or net pressure you are definitely going to consider the effective unit weight because the whole of this truck i mean everything below the gl is completely submerged okay so this is the unit weight of uh, backfill and the unit weight of concrete is 24 which is very much known to us and the depth of foundation is 2.5 thickness of the footing is 600 millimeter length of the footing is uh, 3.5 2.5 is the width and length of column long dimension of the column is 6, 675 millimeter and the uh, short dimension of the column is 375 and the load that is being applied from the superstructure which you have obtained from your model e caps or stand whatever you use uh, that is 1200 kilonewton now the you have to find out the cross pressure and the net pressure so we already know what are the components four components that will contribute into this cross pressure calculation so the first component is due to the superimposed load and that will be p divided by l p being known everything being known that will uh, calculate to 137 kilonewton per meter square and the self weight of the footing that is qf will give you and obviously because this is submerged under water you'll have to consider the effective unit weight of concrete and that is 24 minus 10 although uh, the exact value of unit weight of water is 9.81 but for all practical purpose i personally uh, prefer using 10 it is easy to remember and also 
easy to calculate. So uh, that will give you 8.4 kN per meter square. That is the self weight of the footing and the column uh, from the column contribution is only 0.77 kN per meter square, which is quite understandable because the column size is not that much and it doesn't occupy that much of concrete volume. And the uh, contribution from the backfill, you can calculate by using this expression and that is 10.43 kN per meter square. So that will amount add up to the total gross pressure. If you add up all these four components is 156.74 kN per meter square. And the net pressure as we all have already defined, that is it is equal to the uh, gross pressure minus the effective overburden pressure that is the excess pressure uh, to the existing overburden pressure. That is what we are calculating. So that will be 18 minus 10. 18 is the saturated unit weight of this backfill, but because the water table is there, it is submerged, you have to consider the effective unit weight and that will amount to 136. So you must always remember, and that is the very definition as well, that uh, net uh, pressure will always be less than the cross pressure. Make no mistake in your real life or in your exam papers okay so this is for one case uh, where case one that is the uh, uh, excavation will be backfilled so there may be uh, another case which is uh, excavation not backfilled like in many cases we have to construct basements um, uh, for, for providing car parking or providing you know storage facilities and all these things so what we do is we excavate up to the bottom and then probably uh, as per the need of the structure we provide a large mat foundation and we construct the retaining walls on four sides and uh, through the columns uh, the loads are applied to the mat foundation and also through the retaining walls okay so uh, let us uh, assume that the uh, mat is located at a depth of df and the dimension is b by l and the thickness of the mat is tf and through the columns and retaining walls the superimposed loads uh, that you, uh, you may obtain from the uh, from the etf modeling or stat modeling is q so the total uh, gross pressure now is qg is equal to q divided by a q divided by a plus there is no backfill here so, uh, um, uh, and of course, uh, I have assumed that this Q includes the load self weight of the retaining walls and also the self weight of the columns. So, everything is included there. And plus TF into gamma C, that is the uh, pressure due to the mat foundation itself. And the net pressure will be now QG minus gamma B DF up to the depth of the excavation. The effective overburden pressure relief is there. So there may be two situations now in terms of net pressure. That is, if uh, QG, that is the cross pressure, is greater than gamma df, uh, then uh, the net pressure will be greater than zero. And in such case, this foundation, uh, this type of foundation, where we will not backfill the excavation, will be called as partially compensated. But if these two are equal, that means the net pressure at the foundation level becomes zero. That means no additional pressure. See, please remember, please try to feel that the net pressure means the pressure that acts in excess of the effective overburden pressure of the soil. So at this level, sorry, at this level, you already had this pressure, how much? Equal to gamma df. And the applied load from the superstructure does not exceed this. That means the soil at this level or soil below this level will experience no new additional pressure. And that means a lot for the geotechnical engineers, for all the civil engineers, because if there is no additional disturbing stress at this level and beyond, that means there is no issue of bearing capacity or settlement or whatever but there may be some other issues like buoyancy and all these things that you'll have to check in a separate note but your bearing capacities problem and your uh, settlement problems will be gone if if there is uh, no uh, effective net pressure at the foundation level so this is very important and this definition of net pressure is also very important
Let us pick up an example here. Uh, given uh, this uh, B equal to 10 meter, L equal to 15, and the uh, applied load through this structure, including the self weight of the walls and columns, uh, is 15,000 kilonewton. Depth of the footing is uh, or the mat is 6 meter. Thickness is this much. This is, and we have not considered any. Uh, uh, water table here, uh, the site situation is such that the water table always remains beyond the depth of footing. So we have not considered it in the, uh, in the calculation. So the cross pressure will now be as per this expression and from our very understanding is equal to 128.8 kN per meter square. And if you take the overburden relief or the, uh, you know, if you calculate the net effective or burden, sorry, uh, net, net pressure at the foundation level. So in that case, you will have to minus 16, that is the unit weight of, of the of the, of the the uh, backfill times the depth of foundation, which is 6 meter, and that will give you only 38, 32.8 kilonewton per meter square at the foundation level. See the gross pressure here is 128, which is very high, but if you consider the net pressure, because there is no excavation, there is no backfill here, and also you are considering this uh, uh, gamma df into account in calculation of the net pressure, so the net pressure reduces to only 32. This is not that much, you can understand, you can feel, you should be able to appreciate, and these, you can, I can tell you, these will hardly cause any problem uh, to the bearing capacity of this foundation and also to the settlement, okay? Uh, so thanks very much. Thanks for watching this. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll come back with part two very shortly and uh, we'll talk more about bearing capacity questions and how to analyze this, okay? Thanks very much.